Hello everyone, my name is Alex Reitzema. I'm a trainer for Building Point West on the field technology equipment that Trimble offers to the construction industry. Specifically, today we're going to be talking about Trimble Field Link and Trimble Field Link Office. With the advent of the ability of importing PDF files into Trimble Field Link, we have uh, uncovered an, a, a new issue that's commonly uh, discovered early on in the use of Trimble Field Link where the coordinates of a PDF file do not align to the coordinates that the surveyors give you to lay out to. This is because when you create an export of a computer-aided design and create a PDF export specifically of that CAD file, you lose all coordinate information. When it's then imported into FieldLink, a simple 00, zero origin is assigned to the bottom left of that piece of paper. Oftentimes, the survey efforts that have been done on a site are given to you in the millions of units. Perhaps in the, in, here in Colorado, our state plan coordinate system is given to our contractors in the 3 million northing and 8 million easting. This often causes big problems with FieldLink because it tries to render a 00, zero origin in the same space as a 3 million to 8 million space origin. So because of this, FieldLink Office allows users to move that PDF to line up to the survey data given. Today we're going to look at how to do this. We're going to import some really bad information into FieldLink Office that in fact does not line up. I think this is something a lot of our customers are finding is the need to then align that information before sending it out to the field. Specifically, this is the one function right now that FieldLink Office has that is not available in the field. So make sure that you have the Office version installed and let's jump into it. Before we get started on the PDF import, I'd like to show you a more in-depth description of what the issues you may be seeing that would lead you to, to do this movement in FieldLink Office. Here we have a pretty detailed CAD model. This is actually the Trimble headquarters in Westminster, Colorado. And you may actually have something similar, a really, really good looking model. And now that uh, you, know, you want to use your Trimble equipment, you may be given survey, uh, survey points to set this up on. That's a great point to start a, sort of start from. And you may even go to the, the point of importing that as a CSV into this job. What often happens then after we import the points that are shown on the screen is there is often a really big issue. And as I hit the top right buttons to hit the zoom extents or, or zoom all the way out, we can see that there is a, an additional point <clears throat> very, very far away if we look down at our scale bar, very, very far away from where the rest of our model is designed to be. Furthermore, if I turn my points off, and that can be done from the drag out at the bottom right, selecting the screen options in the gear, and turning off all of those points I just imported, that kind of disappears and I can hit my zoom button and get back to where I was. Learning to toggle the model or the points on or off will often get you through that issue or, or is a good, good first starting point to diagnose what our issues are. We can then sort out where we want this model to move from and where we want it to move to. In the example we're looking at on the screen right now, if I turn my points back on and hit zoom out, we'll see that this 138 point is up at a significantly larger value at a 1 million and 1 million X and Y as opposed to the rest of our model. If I turn my points back off, Zooming all the way out on available information on the screen will just show us our model again. And now we can see that maybe down here on our preview point is sitting at more like 219 to 80. This problem is extrapolated when you start to import PDF files because as mentioned before, all coordinate information is lost when you import a PDF file. So let's jump into making a new job and importing some of this information. So here we are in Trimble Field Link Office and to re-level the expectations as we've seen we've started a brand new uh, job under more icon at the top we've gone to jobs and we've gone to manage. This is to allow us to create a new job that all subsequent data can be imported onto. Next we go to the more jobs and import and we imported all relevant information. Now we can go to more and we can go to map and as we see, we see nothing. 
The other big issue and indicator that we have a problem is at the bottom we see a scale bar that says 10,000 feet. That's because, as, as mentioned before, it's graphically trying to render the distance between the two models that we have imported. Looking down at the drag out below the letter, small letter I, we can see a new button. Looks like a PDF file here. Clicking on it, we can see the two files that have been imported. We can turn them off one at a time and then zoom in with the top right zoom button to each file to look at it. So here's the control point file. And this will show under the create, we can go to from model. And perhaps we can identify an intersection point of where this control point is. is. Looking at the coordinates that CP59 was identified under the control point file, it's somewhere in the 10 million and 4 million coordinates. I'm going to go ahead and delete that point. As we've seen before, we can do that under Point Manager. Highlight these points and hit the trash can. Switching that back, we can go to More and Map and turn our other model on and hit Zoom Out. And here we can find the same AA1 grid point. At a much different coordinate. And we're not look, working in the 10 millions, we're working in the hundreds. So the next decision to make is which direction you want to move. Whether you want to move the control point file and the grid system that it has correlated down to this location, or if you want to move this up to the coordinates of the, that the surveyor gave you. In the example given, we want to maintain the coordinate system of the surveys, and we want to take this file that's perhaps in the hundreds of units, and this could be maybe an imported PDF file, and we want to move it up to line up to that one. As shown, we sort of need a starting base point to move that from and match it up to, to the point in the other file. So to get started, we're going to identify this starting base point of A1. And if I come back and delete this point one more time under Point Manager, I can switch b back to my other file. Switching back to the original survey information that was given to us, we can also see that there's going to be an issue with the angle that this file has been rotated to. Um, so we sort of need to determine how far off of perfectly plumb uh, this, this file or grid line is set to. So we'll start in the create menu at the top to solve this problem. We'll go to the from model and we'll create two points along grid, grid line one. So here we go, picking up the intersections as it shows checked at the bottom. We will then use our ruler at the top left and click on first point 100 and then point 101 and it displays an azimuth value. This azimuth is displayed with a perfect zero value at a 12 o'clock on a, on a traditional clock and uh, 3 o'clock being a 90 degree. So since we need to do uh, a little bit of math here to sort out what the difference is between that and a perfect 90. To do that, we'll first add up uh, this, what it's shown here, degrees, minutes, and seconds. And um, so doing a bit of math, I'm going to write down what the difference is. That will be 18 degrees, and it will be 9 minutes and 11 seconds. So that will be our angle of rotation off of a uh, straight level. So uh, with that in mind, we have an angle of rotation. <clears throat> the next thing we need to do after we know the angle is to determine the coordinate of our destination. We can do this by selecting the small letter I at the bottom right, selecting our A1 0.101 and we can see the coordinates displayed. I would go ahead and copy this out onto a notepad because we're going to need that later on and go ahead and delete these points again.
now that we've determined both the angle of rotation as well as the end destination coordinate, the next thing to do is to do that movement. So here we can see the A1 that is a shared coordinate between these two files, uh, shared, shared point. We'll come up to the more and we'll go to map. Down at the bottom right, we'll go to the model selector. Select the point, the model that you want to move and select the edit. Zooming out now, you'll see an origin point that is pretty much in the center of your model. The next thing to do is to move this over to A1. So the origin is, needs to be sort of placed on our, our place of ori orientation. So as we can see in the video here, we do this by toggling on these two pieces of paper that are sort of stacked on top of one another. As you can see, you can switch that on or off. So we need to make sure that we have the uh, origin arrows pink and then it will allow us to sort of place that um, and it will snap to this intersection or you can come into the paper and pencil and type in um, the exact coordinate that you'd like that to sit at. So we can just sort of zoom in and, and it, you can notice a little option here to make sure it's snapping to CAD elements here. And uh, we'll call that good and lock it into position there. And now uh, we can notice that uh, our whole model is sort of moving. Um, as we move this, it's, it's locked the origin point to A1 and we're moving this uh, to different locations and you can see the coordinates of that A1 uh, changing as we do that movement. So you can kind of guess where we're headed now. We have a common point um, popping up our notepad. We have the coordinate where this needs to end up being. So that's right. We'll go ahead and grab that coordinate, copy that and type that into the destination X value. Continuing the process, we'll grab that destination Y value, copy it, and paste it into the Y value here. Now if we pop out, we'll see that whole screen has gone white, right? Because it has now done that movement, and that origin point is sitting at that destination A1. Simply pushing this zoom out button here, the zoom extents, we'll see that we jump back to being able to see our model. Next thing we want to do is kind of see how close we got. So we'll turn back on our, uh, both of our models as a visual sort of representation. We can see that A1 in fact has snapped onto that location. However, the angle is still incorrect. So coming back into our paper and pencil, we will set that incremental angle to the calculated value from before. Uh, I believe it was 18 degrees, 9 minutes, and 11 seconds. Popping back out, you can see it will not make that change. It has just set the incremental angle at the bottom left. You then have to choose which way you want to rotate that to line up to our eventual angle of rotation. Well, that's how you can do alignment of two different models, whether it be PDF, uh, CSV, or three different DWG files can all be aligned in this manner using Trimble Field Link Office. The last step to this is getting that information out to the users in the field. Um, we want to make sure that this is done in a uh, responsible manner to make sure that that movement shows up for the field operators. To make sure this happens correctly, I'll go up to the More, Jobs, and I'll go to Manage. I'll select my currently open job that shows, and I will sit, hit Save As. Selecting the folder icon, you can either choose to save this locally to the desktop, directly to Trimble Connect, or a flash drive. I would suggest creating a separate folder within the Trimble Field Link folder or on your documents that you can find this information, naming it something unique, and then hitting Save As.